as recipients of the cross, we too are humbly recipients of God's grace. If we really reflect on the act of love, it makes us blush to think that God loves you so much that he wouldn't stop dying for you. That Jesus placed himself on the cross to experience humanity's worst so that you can experience God's best, that you can inherit relationship with him and his kingdom. And he loved humanity so much that he loved them to the end, the scripture says. The Greek word end is telos. It could be translated as the end, like the end of his life, or the end of all things, like eternity. Jesus loved to his last breath on the cross. Jesus loved humanity. He loved you. And he loved you to eternity, right? Or as we tell maybe our kids, I love you to the moon and back. Jesus' love knows no end, whether it be the end of his life or the end of all time. And he loved, and these are the actions, him washing feet, him dying on the cross. These are acts of sacrificial love. That's the depth of love that Jesus has. He had, he had you on his mind to the end. And he loves you to eternity and beyond. And that's the love that was on display with that towel and that basin. And that's the love that was on display on that old rugged cross. On his blood being shed on the cross. That's the very love that he models for us. And he inspires and encourages us to follow that pattern to love others deeply and sacrificially. You are loved by God. Not a love that is shown just by chocolates or flowers or cute emojis, but an eternal love to the end. A love that God himself will take off his royal robes of majesty, that he'll leave the loftiness of heaven to put aside his rightful place in all of creation to do the work of a servant, to clean our hearts, to clean our lives, so that we can be part with him, so we can take part in that life and that fellowship with God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Can I tell you that in your life, God is not surprised how dirty your soul is, how dirty your heart is. He has walked those roads that you have. He knows the situation and the circumstances that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable about truly confessing our sins to God. A little uncomfortable with coming to God and receiving that invitation to be cleansed and to be regenerated and to be a new creation. So we respond by graciously accepting the work of Jesus on the cross, by recognizing our need for him to cleanse our spirit, to cleanse our lives, and to accept the gift that he is the one who could make us clean.